The Quran. For the Muslim people, this book contains the words of God, revealed to his last prophet. But for the other peoples, this book is nothing more than a book. That was written by men who lived in Arabia around the 7th century, who were inspired by Christianity and Judaism. We're gonna see in this video that many facts that were unknown at that time are mentioned in the Quran. The Quran is not a book of science, but those scientific facts that have only been discovered recently are expressed in a very concise and profound manner. Arab or European peoples did not have this knowledge at that time. And we must remember that the Quran has never been modified for more than 1400 years. Do the disbelievers not realize that the heavens and earth were once one mass? Then we split them apart and we created from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? This verse contains two facts that have been discovered in the last century. First of all, saying that the heavens and earth were one mass which was split apart. It's a sentence that some people will consider simplistic but which is extremely accurate and with few words perfectly sums up the Big Bang Theory. Modern science estimates that the creation of the universe is 13 billion years old and indeed at the beginning the whole universe was united in one mass. Some will say that matter was maybe united in one mass but the heavens or the space were not. But the sky is not empty our atmosphere is made up of various molecules like oxygen, carbon dioxide, ozone, water and many more. Regarding the space, it is indeed much less dense than the Earth's atmosphere. But that doesn't mean it's empty. There are gases in the form of hydrogen atoms, helium or atoms of heavier elements. And there is also what scientists call dark matter which is a matter that is supposed to be widespread throughout the universe, but that we cannot measure or quantify. The second fact we notice in this verse is that the Quran says that all living things are made of water. The fact that water is necessary for life on Earth is not a discovery. Since the dawn of time, mankind know they need water to live and for animals too. But that's not what this verse means. The Quran says clearly that all living things are made up of water. We know now that 50 to 80% of a living thing's weight is water. 80% of the cytoplasm of an animal cell is water. Cytoplasm is the inner part of the cell. All animals, humans or plants are made of cell. Scientists say that the first living species appeared in the oceans and indeed the blood plasma has a similar composition to sea water. It contains the same trace elements. And these facts were obviously not known when the Quran was revealed. We have built the sky with mites and indeed, it is we who are its expanders. The fact that the universe is constantly expanding is a discovery attributed to Edwin Hubble. It was a major scientific discovery, because before that, people thought the universe was infinite and having always existed. And this fact is mentioned in the Quran since it was revealed. They ask you to hasten the torment, and Allah will never fail in his promise. But a day with your Lord is indeed like a thousand years in the way you count. The theory of relativity is not an easy thing, but it can be explained very clearly and quickly. Briefly, time does not flow the same way, 
depending on where you are in the universe. The theory of relativity was discovered in 1915 by Albert Einstein. This theory was considered revolutionary at that time because it influenced science in many fields, like the invention of GPS, television, and research in electromagnetism. And we sent down iron with its great might and benefits for humanity and means for Allah to prove who stand up for him and his messengers without seeing him. Surely Allah is all-powerful, almighty. In this verse, the Quran claims that God sent down the iron on earth. The Arabic word that is used is anzalna which literally means to physically bring down from the sky. Nowadays, it is a well-known scientific fact that all the iron on Earth was not formed on our planet, nor in our solar system. The iron on Earth and in the solar system comes from stars at least four times larger than our Sun, which exploded in a supernova. Iron therefore fell on earth as meteor or dust. Even if men have already seen meteors crashing on earth, this fact was only discovered much later than the Quran was revealed. Glory be to the one who created all pairs, what the earth produces, their genders, or what they do not know. In this verse, the Quran says that everything is created in pairs, as well the human beings and what the earth produces, so the plants. In this case, this scientific discovery was made at the end of the 17th century, with the invention of the microscope. And, indeed, all plants have male and female reproductive organs and reproduce with these. But we can also go deeper in the analysis of this verse, because for each quantity of matter, there is a quantity of antimatter associated with it and which is present somewhere in the universe. According to the Big Bang theory, matter and antimatter were to be equal at the creation of the universe. It is a complicated subject and science continues to progress in this field. Regardless from what point of view we analyze this verse, these two points were totally unknown at the time where the Quran was revealed. He is the knower of the unseen whom not an atom's weight eludes, either in the heavens or in the earth. Nor is there anything smaller or larger than that, which is not in a clear book. It was the ancient Greek philosophers who were the first to formulate the idea that all things on earth and in the universe are composed of atoms, invisible to the human eye. But it was a theory that had not been proven at that time. It was in 1808 that John Dalton proved that all things are indeed made up of atoms. At that time, people thought that the atoms are the elementary particles of matter, that there is no smaller things. But in 1897, Joseph John Thompson proved that wrong by discovering the electron and it was during the 20th century that neutrons, protons, and after that elementary particles were discovered. And yet it was mentioned in the Quran several centuries before. Or like darknesses within an unfathomable sea which is covered by waves, upon which are waves, over which are clouds, darknesses, some of them upon others, 
when one puts out his hands, he can hardly see it. And he to whom Allah has not granted light, for him there is no light. Darkness in deep water is something that is obvious to us. Because we have all seen videos showing the seabed. But this is something that must be less obvious for a man who lived in the Arabian desert in the 7th century. Darkness in deep seas start at 600 feet. At this depth there is almost no light. But it is from 3000 feet that there is no light at all. And another fact to note is there are waves in the deep seas. This has been discovered recently, we cannot see these waves. We can detect them by studying the changes in temperature or salinity of the depth. Who made for you the earth a bed and the sky a ceiling? We made the sky a preserved and protected roof, yet still they turn away from our signs. In this verse, the sky is mentioned as a ceiling or a roof. This implies that it has a protective function. Everybody knows now that the atmosphere is necessary for life on Earth. But it also has the function of protecting the Earth. The atmosphere protects and sustains the planet's inhabitants by providing warmth and absorbing harmful solar rays, but also by destroying meteors that could crash on Earth. So the atmosphere is a kind of invisible roof. And we placed within the earth firmly set mountains, lest it should shift with them. And the mountains he set firmly. We know now that mountains appear as a result of the movements and collisions of the large tectonic plates that make up the Earth's crust. These plates, by fitting into each other, create mountains' relief. Although it is a consequence of it, they play a role in the stability of the plates. We also know that mountains act as shock absorber and accumulate the force of these collisions, which avoid some earthquake, but this force will be released later. In the second verse, the word used to say that Allah set firmly the mountains is the Arabic word Arsaha, which means planted but also rooted. You have to know that mountains do indeed have roots. This is called a crustal root. These roots can be up to 15 times the visible part of the mountain. The Qur'an also reveals to us about the conception of the human being and its evolution during pregnancy. And he created the pairs, males and females, from a sperm drop when it's emitted. Until very recently, it was thought that baby's gender was determined by the mother's cells. And over the centuries, women have often been blamed for this. But we know now that there are male and female sperm cells. So it is the sperm that determines the baby's gender. When the sperm unites with the egg, this cell will evolve into an embryo. This can only be seen with a microscope. The embryo clings to the uterus with something like roots. Through this link with the mother, the embryo can receive the substances essential to its development. Read, in the name of your Lord, who created, created humans from a clinging clot. The Arabic word that is used is the word alaka. The meaning of the word alaka is a thing that clings, 
This word is used to describe leeches that cling to a body to suck blood. Then we develop the drop into a clinging clot, and we develop the clot into a lump, and we develop the lump into bones, then clothed the bones with flesh, then we brought it into being as a new creation. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Till very recently, embryologists assumed that the bones and the muscles developed at the same time. Yet, advanced microscopic research have proved that the development occurs exactly as described in this verse. It is described in a scientific publication titled Developing Human by Keith Moore with the following words. Shape of the skeleton determines the general appearance of the embryo. In the bones staged during the seventh week, muscles do not develop at the same time, but their developments follow soon after. The muscles take their positions around the bones throughout the body and therefore clothe the bones. Thus the muscles take their well-known forms and structure. The stage of clothing with muscles occurs during the eighth week. And the Arabic word used to describe a lamp is the word mutra which means a chewed lump of which we can observe the resemblance. He creates you in the warmth of your mother, one development after another, in three layers of darkness. This is Allah your Lord. It is not obvious to say what the Quran suggests when it speaks of three layers of darkness. But it is important to say that the uterus is divided into three parts, this is the first point. Then it must be said that the embryo, before it develops, is surrounded by three layers, which are called ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Each of these layers will develop separately. Ectoderm will give rise to the skin and nervous system. Mesoderm specifies the developments of bones, muscles, and connective tissues. Endoderm becomes the lining of respiratory and digestive system, as well as other organs. And then there is also the fact that embryonic development takes place in three different regions in the mother's womb. Today, in all the embryology textbooks studied in departments of medicine, this subject is taken as an element of basic knowledge. For instance, in basic human embryology, a fundamental reference text in the field of embryology, this fact is studied as follows. The life in the uterus has three stages, pre-embryonic, first two and a half week, embryonic until the end of the eighth week, and fetal from the eighth week to labor. These phases, also called trimester, refer to the different developmental stages of a baby. All the facts that we have just mentioned were all totally unknown at the time of the revelation of the Quran. Some would say it is coincidences and the result of chance. But that's a lot of coincidences. And when you believe in God, you know that coincidences are never the result of chance.